So I absolutely love looking at Copart and IAAI.com. Just looking at like deals on salvage cars and flooded cars and cars that sometimes are clean title and stuff. And, um, you know, two of the cars I've bought recently were from, from there, from Copart. Uh, I bought a Targa 4S and I bought a Jeep Wrangler. Um, not that either one of them was an amazing deal by any means, but in, and neither one of those projects are even anywhere close to pretty much not even started. Um, so in any case, I love looking and the videos I've been making lately are talking about M5 CSs. And uh, my new conundrum is, you know, is the M5 CS the right car for me? And especially because I hate the loss of resale value. Um, so I was thinking, you know, maybe I should be looking at a base model or a comp. Um, so comp, comp meaning like competition, M5 competition. So not a CS. I like the idea of getting a sunroof and the idea of getting uh, cool ventilated seats, cooled seats, whatever you want to call it. Uh, better sound system, stuff like that. Right. So, you know. My, I immediately am like, okay, what's on Copart? So I find this car in Copart and it's in Los Angeles. It's a 2018, which I believe is the first year of the F90 M5, same generation that the M5 CS is part of. It's our, the current generation and uh, amazing color. I think it's called Singapore gray. I looked it up on the VIN decoder thing. Um, it does say it has a uh, certificate of salvage flood damage New Jer from New Jersey. Anyway, um, I'm going to show it on the screen here, make my ugly mug go away. Boom. Okay. That car, right? So I see it's up for bid and I'm looking at it today. I looked at, sorry, I was looking at it yesterday and maybe even the day before. And I'm like, oh man, this is, this auction's coming up pretty soon. There's a buy it now for 36 grand and you know, it's got carbon ceramic brakes. It has carbon fiber roof. It has the Burmester no, sorry, Bowers and Wilkins sound system. Um, some really nice options. And it also has the Silverstone leather interior, which absolutely, I absolutely love gray interior. Big fan of that. Um, and I've always loved blue cars with gray interior. So this isn't blue. This is gray. This is a Singapore gray or whatever, which is like a metallic gray, um, darker gray, and uh, or maybe more like a dark gunmetal. So anyway. I really like the options. I wish it had the moonroof, but again, this is an auction car that they're asking 36 K for. It doesn't say it starts anywhere on here, but I had seen this picture right, uh, right here. And I'm going, okay, well they've got the dash on and it looks really cloudy and gross. So that doesn't, the, the cloudiness seems gross and bad, but the, but the fact that the lights are on, you know, that the dash is actually lit up seems like a good thing. So I'm thinking, you know, maybe there's some hope here. I know there are a lot of cars, that you're just, you know, you just don't have enough cranking amps from the, the jump packs that they're using at the lot. And I've watched, you know, other YouTube people that are just walking around, you know, lots and they bring jump packs with them and they get things to actually start up sometimes. So I'm just thinking, okay, you know, last night I actually set my alarm this morning to like, okay, drive up to LA. It's, it's an hour and a half away. It's not just going around the corner, but go up there and, you know, Take a look. That's a good price to save. You know, if I was thinking about spending over well over a hundred, more like one, geez, more like one sixty plus with after taxes, I think more like one eighty um, for an M five CS. This is a huge difference in price for a similar car. Um, why not just? I felt like I'd be kicking myself in the butt to not not just drive up there, look at the condition, stick my head in there, and see if it smells disgusting. If it how flood how how gross is the flood damage? Does it stink? Does the car start? All that kind of stuff. Like, I'm going to be bothered if I don't check. So anyway, I go up there. The process was not that great. And I've been at these Copart lots before. As I mentioned, I bought some other cars, right? So when you watch people on YouTube go, they're just like skipping around the parking lot, having a great time filming. And they've got their backpack with tools and all this stuff. And everyone's friendly complete different thing in Los Angeles. I don't know if it's a California Copart thing or what, but you go inside and no one, it's, it feels like no one really wants to talk to you. Like, I don't know why, but if both places I've been to, it feels like it's pulling teeth just to get someone to say, hi, how's it going? How can I help you? Like, they really don't want to talk to me. I don't know why it's really weird. Um, and then, you know, I'll say, oh, I just want to go look at a car and like, oh, it's, it seems like they're like, oh, great. This person wants to go look at a car. And I'm thinking like, what kind of business is this? Um, 
they must really not like it when people come to look at cars. Seriously. Um, so anyway, you know, I go, I bring my jump pack with me and they're like, oh, you, you can't bring that. And I'm like, I had just watched legit street cars the other day with like a whole backpack full of tools. And they're telling me I can't use a jump pack. It's so weird. So I had to leave my jump. They actually told me to go back to my car and there was no parking lot there. It was like parking was next to a homeless encampment and it was around a corner, which, you know, the walk, I don't mind the exercise side of it, but the, like the, the location was, it's, it's terrible. Um, anyway, I'm not going to get it anymore. It's, it's just not, it's like, go back to your car and put it back. I'm just like, you, sorry, I almost cussed. Um, I try not to cuss in my videos. Uh, are you kidding me? Right. Are you, are you kidding me that I would need to go? Like, can, can you guys just hold it? Like, well, we don't want to be liable if it gets stolen or something. I'm like, I don't care. Just, just, it's put on the, can I just put on the counter? I'm going to be right back. I'm just going to look at a car. They're like, okay, fine. Like, it's a big deal. Anyway, sorry. I'm not really getting in the weeds on this, but, um, so they're like, go into the, you know, you're, you're giving me the number, your uh, member number and you go out into the dirt lot and someone will meet you there. So I'm standing there and a lady comes out. She's really awesome. So the good news is that the experience in the office wasn't that great. Um, the people didn't seem like they wanted to help me very much, but the lady at the lot was awesome. She was so cool. So nice. Um, and I'm not going to say her name because I don't want her to get in trouble if she said anything she wasn't supposed to. Uh, but anyway, she takes me to the car. It's disgusting. Um, so this picture right here, let's see if I can do, I think HD makes that. No, that's not what I wanted. View all maybe. No, the picture. So first of all, I don't know what's up with Copart. It's, it's really like they don't want you to buy cars from them. Um, the pictures are like tiny resolution. I bet you they would tell you that they... Um, they, the pictures are low quality because they don't want to take up too much database space or something, but I mean, cloud data and it's, that's like the worst excuse I've ever heard of. Um, they could easily afford to have better pictures. It's that they, I think they don't want you to have better pictures. That's just my theory. But so I get to the car, the windshield wipers are not up like that. Um, the bumper right here, I don't know if it, we'll see it in other pictures here, but the bumper is like popped off and it's just filthy, like disgusting it's coated in grime it, it's you can't even see what color it is basically i should have took pictures i'm sorry i thought about that as soon as i got into the car i almost thought about going back so yeah look right here on this this spot here where the bumper meets this is popped off so and also now it's parked in between two cars i think they've moved it around a lot with the tractor so the the tractor probably broke some of the front bumper a little bit um Anyway, so uh, I look at the car. We they they have their own jump pack. Um, we get the hood popped. We hook we hook up the the battery cable things to the front leads under the hood, and try to start it. And it makes like a clicking noise. And the light all the lights come on inside the car, but it just makes this weird clicking noise. And I get a an error message that I should have took a picture of, that says something like the you know, battery storage device is uh, non functional or something like that. Um, it was a weird message. It didn't just say battery is dead. It said something kind of in a weird way. Um, so, but the car smelled like new leather. It did not smell like any sort of flooding grossness at all. It was very clean. Seats were very nice. I couldn't find a water line anywhere. It, yeah, there were no signs of flood. Um, so, but there's a lot of weird stuff going on. So this is a third party a third party seller is selling this car, which is a huge red flag. Just so you guys know, if anyone's ever interested in doing a purchase of from Copart or IAAI, you want to buy the cars that are from like Allstate and State Farm and all those places because they don't mess with things. Third party, they do mess with things. And I believe on Copart, it will say which insurance company that the car is from. Uh, whereas if it's from a third party, it will just say nothing. Uh, and the lady told me that if you look at the windshield, let's see if there's one on here. Yeah, this sticker here, it will say the insurance company on the sticker. And if it has no insurance company listed, then it means it's third party. So I know I'm going through a lot of stuff here. Um, the the engine cover is missing. Um, that was, a, I already knew that from these pictures. But this plastic shroud piece right here was like falling off. This bolt is completely almost out. And I never noticed it in the picture, but when I stared at the engine, I'm like, oh, that I can just take that with my hand right now. Um, there's a crack in the shroud here up front. And the biggest thing is, and, and sorry, 
this is before I forget, this is weird. The, the dashboard, the screen itself is gross looking like maybe someone used some sort of a wiping product uh, with some sort of wetness on it. And it made it disgusting. I don't know. I think it could probably be cleaned up, but it, it was weird looking. And it, you know, maybe you could say it was water damage, but nothing and uh, nothing else anywhere on the dashboard looked like it had ever been touched by water. So I, I think maybe someone used a bad cleaning product. Um, but the biggest thing was the trunk. So, uh, you know, mo most BMWs have the battery in the trunk. And so I immediately wanted to go back there because I was thinking in my head, why don't we try jumping it from the, the battery directly instead of from the leads under the hood, <clears throat> under the hood. And, uh, and again, another situation where I should have took a picture, um, when I popped the, the trunk and, uh, and looked in the battery compartment area where the, it's like where a spare tire would normally be kind of thing. Um, there was a, a sign of a, a small fire that had occurred and some burning on the, the main power lead that goes to the battery. Um, I was kind of under, and the lady who was with me, she's seen a lot of stuff and had a lot of good information. And she said that she, we, I guess we both thought that this was from an airbag going off or a, an accident. Um, so usually, you know, you, a lot of people have probably seen like goon squad and people doing repairs on cars where there's like that safety wire that connects to the battery and it will, explode there's actually i think an explosive device that is connected to it that goes off and it disconnects the battery so i think it has something to do with that and that maybe the third party guy actually tried like ghetto wiring it back like rigging it up to try to make it go back together and that's how why there's power but i think that's why it doesn't start um and i could be wrong about that but there was definitely you know there's some melting and there's some singeing stuff and part of me thinks like oh man i wonder if this is as simple as just like replacing the battery and all of the electronics in the back in that one section. It's not a lot of stuff. It's just like brackets and some fuses and stuff like that. It's not, it, it probably would be, you know, a thousand dollars at the most. That's part of my brain is thinking that way. Like, cause you know, it's just like, Oh, if I buy this lottery ticket, I'm definitely going to win the lottery. Right. Your brain's always trying to trick you into thinking that you're going to do something. It's oh, like, you know, things are going to work out for you. Um, I try not to listen to that side of my brain. So, you know, with the stuff, the stuff going on under the hood, that's concerning, right? There's a crack in the, um, the shroud here, the front shroud, the, the bumpers kind of all jacked up. All that could just be from the tractors moving it around in the yard though. Um, and then there's this bolt missing thing and the, the engine cover is missing. So I don't know how, I have no idea what the condition of the motor is, right? I, you know, the paint's looking pretty bad with all the, how dirty it is, but it might just wash right off and be fine. The interior looks really good. Um, it's got carbon ceramic brakes though, right? So it's carbon ceramics, the good sound system, carbon fiber roof, which isn't really what I want, but it's sick. Um, you know, there's a lot of good things going on here, but then there's the buy it now price, right? So I'll go back. It's 36 grand. And sorry, for whatever reason, when I, huh, I wonder what did I do wrong here? Why? Oh, I think I know what's going on. I need to like read. This is the old listing. It's over. Um, let's see if I can just refresh this. This is very strange. Oh, okay. I don't know something maybe. Oh, you know what? I was zoomed in. Sorry guys. I'm supposed to be good with computers. Huh? Um, all right. So $36,000, right? So here's the story with why I rushed down there. The bid was saying it was ending today at 6 PM. The current bid was $33,750 reserve not met. So I'm, I'm thinking, oh man, there's some people bidding on this thing and I got to buy it for the 36 grand, but I got to go look at the car first. So I'm rushing to get over there to try to, you know, look at it before in time to get this buy now done. Well, you know, the lady tells me that the third party sellers are notorious for bidding on their own stuff to try to make me feel like I need, like there's competition and I'm going to lose out on a good deal. Exactly the feeling I had. She says that the, the third party sellers know about that and that they're artificially inflating the bids to make you think like, Oh man, I got to hit the buy it now button. So that's pretty shady. Um, she's like, this car has been here since 2021. That's a long time. She said she could tell because the sticker on the dash on the, um, the windshield 
Let's see if I can make the picture go back. I don't know why the pictures are being weird. This sticker thing that's right here, one of the numbers on there is the, um, but maybe we can even see right here. Yeah, um, I don't know which part it is, but she said something about this sticker, uh, or maybe it was the lot number. Let's see, where's the lot number? Yeah, this is the lot number, which would what was on the sticker. I think it's the one at the very end. I think she said the one means it was 2021 was when it went up for sale. So a third party's had it sitting on this in this parking lot for a year, which is terrible. And they haven't sold the car yet. And they're playing these games. And no one's biting on it, right? So a lot of red flags, big red flags. Um, problems with the battery and, the, and fire in the back. It says it's flood from New Jersey, which would make sense because of Ida. But then there's some damage in the front bumper and weird stuff going on in the hood. So summary of this is I got a little bit weirded out by it. And I said, and, and she gave me an advice. She's like, just, just. If, if you have like a weird feeling about it, do whatever you want, but why don't you do a little more research and sleep on it? And it's going to, it's probably going to be, and she's like, I know you're thinking it's not going to be here tomorrow because there are people that were bidding, actively bidding on it, but I bet you it will be. She's completely right. Look, it's, it's sitting, it started, it's a whole new listing again, $0. So I can just make an offer right now an offer of $20,000 and see what they say. They'll probably say no. That's what I was leaning toward is like, okay, if I, if I offer 20 K and the motor's blown and all the wiring's junked, blah, blah, blah. Right. Well, worst case scenario, I've got some carbon ceramic brakes I can put up on eBay. They sell for usually about $8,000. I've got, you know, I can sell the hood. I could probably remove the roof. That's probably worth some good money. The seats and every, all the interior is worth some good money. Um, I know it's not an ideal thing to do. It would make more sense to try to fix any electrical problems, get the car working, but for $20,000, I mean, a 600 horsepower M5 that is in good condition, um, no no crash damage, no ma sorry, no major crash damage that I can tell of, um, that's that's worth it. I don't think he's going to say yes, but I mean, dude's been sitting on the car for a year in a dirt parking lot. He, he must be a doing okay, you know, money-wise to not have pushed to get this thing sold somewhere else. So that's pretty much my video. Um, that's where I'm leaving off with this. I'm, I'm going to, maybe I'll try making an offer and it'll just be a project car. And if I bought it for that cheap, I probably would still consider buying another M5 because I would just assume that I won't be driving this car anytime soon. <laughs> um, I could be wrong. I don't know. Uh, I want to know what you guys think is $20,000, a terrible idea, no matter what, like, no matter what I'm thinking, like this car is just the worst car in the world. Or is anyone like, Think that it's going to be an easier fix than I think it is, and and I should go after it. So um, that's pretty much it. I'm going to try to make another video tonight about my, uh, or maybe it'll be tomorrow about my Targa 4S, just a tiny update on it. So um, that's it for now. I'll see you guys in the next video.